The Sacramento Historic Rose Garden has been recognized by the Great Rosarians of the World Hall of Fame Award and is a World Federation of Rose Society's Garden of Excellence for its efforts to preserve roses that would otherwise be lost. April is when the roses are at peak bloom and activities in the garden abound. So it's the perfect time to have garden curator Anita Clevenger with us. Anita became interested in heritage roses 30 years ago, inspired by the roses that her friends and neighbors, Bill and Vivian Harp, collected during travels to historic sites. After her retirement as a logistics manager for the Air Force in 2001, she became a master gardener and started volunteering in this historic rose garden. Fast forward to today, and she is the garden's manager and curator, where she leads tours, conducts training, and coordinates the efforts of fellow volunteers. So sit back and relax. It's time for Rose Chat. It's time for the Rose Chat Podcast, a podcast dedicated to celebrating the world's most beloved flower, the rose. Join award-winning gardeners Chris Van Cleef and Teresa Byington as they chat with rose lovers and experts from around the globe. With each episode, you'll gain valuable knowledge and insights to achieve the rose garden you've always dreamed of. Listen now as we explore the world of roses. Hey y'all, it's Chris Van Cleef. I'm the creator of the Rose Chat Podcast. For me, growing roses has become a passion. My membership in the American Rose Society has helped me to create the rose garden of my dreams right in my own backyard. I also enjoy the camaraderie and support of a network of rose growers who are eager to share, learn, and grow together. To learn more about membership in the American Rose Society, visit their website, rose.org. Try Haven Brand Soil Conditioners, providing generations of gardeners with a truly all-natural alternative to chemical fertilizers with their line of composted manure and alfalfa teas. Easy to brew and use on all indoor and outdoor plants. Find them online at manuretea.com. Hey, Anita, welcome to Rose Chat. Hi, Teresa. Anita, your love for historic roses started 30 years ago. So before we start talking about the garden, and we have a lot to talk about there for sure, tell us a little bit about your rose story. Well, I moved to 53rd Street here in Sacramento actually 40 years ago and met my neighbors just a couple of weekends after I moved in and over the years, enjoyed visiting their garden and seeing the roses that they would collect when they would go up into the foothills, into the gold country here in California or back to their homes. Uh, Bill's family was from Virginia and he would bring roses back from Virginia and work to identify them. And they were all these historic roses, heritage roses. It was so much fun to figure out what they were and to see the different ways that they grew. One time he opened up an ice chest of cuttings and, you know, the scent from that ice chest just about knocked us over. The roses smelled so good. So I got very excited about old roses. And when I had an opportunity to begin volunteering in the historic rose garden, it just seemed like a natural fit. Oh, there's just nothing like that fragrance of those roses, for sure. When you mentioned gold country, it reminded me of stories I've read about Francis E. Lester and how he was looking for roses in those same areas. So that's kind of cool. Well, and our founder, Fred Botine, also traveled the, the mother load of the gold country looking for roses. And it's been a great source for roses. And every now and then we find something else exciting. Oh, that is so, so neat. Uh, Nina, many of our listeners are new to this garden, so could you give us a history, a little overview of the garden? Yes, it's the Sacramento Historic City Cemetery was founded at the end of 1849 at the height of the gold rush, and it originally was planted as a garden cemetery by the families who were burying their loved ones there in pioneer and Victorian days. But then it fell into disuse and was virtually abandoned and was pretty well in need of a lot of repair and a lot of bringing back to life. So 30 years ago, a group of citizens began to work on restoring 
the cemetery back to its former grandeur, including planting some gardens there. Fred Botine and a woman named Jean Travis, so Fred was a Rosarian uh, who had worked at the Huntington Library and Garden, and Jean Travis was a plant person and rose person here in Sacramento, came up with the idea of putting a heritage rose garden focused on found roses of the gold rush time and country and putting it into the cemetery. They asked the city's permission, they agreed, and in 1992, our garden began with the first planting of about 100 roses. It's now grown to over 500 roses, which is very exciting that we have such a good collection. Now, do, do many of the roses repeat, or is that 500 different roses? Or Well, we have probably about 325 different varieties. And I say probably because we have roses that have been collected different sites under different names. We grow them and compare them. They're at least related. There's quite a few that seem to be similar to Hermosa or to um, Madame Lombard or to a hybrid perpetual Lorraine. It's possible that they're simply related and not identical roses. So we grow the different clones and compare them and keep their found names so that we can keep track of of what they are and where they came from. Well, I'll tell you, one of those roses is one that I'm still trying to get my hands on. I, I think it was by Barbara Olivia, uh, Barbara's Pasture Rose. Yes, and that has such a wonderful story to it. It Barbara and some other rose lovers were out looking to see what they could find and spotted this magnificent pink rose blooming in a pasture. <laughs> and there was no one around to ask, and it was surrounded by barbed wire. And Barbara was probably 75 at least at that point, and she said, hold up that wa barbed wire, I'm going in. And she shinned under the barbed wire and triumphantly emerged with some cuttings. <laughs> and it's one of our favorite roses. It <laughs> is very similar to Lorraine, but we've been told it's really the healthiest, most vigorous specimen of Lorraine anyone's ever seen. I grow it right outside my office window. I'm looking at it right now, and it's getting ready to bloom this spring. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful rose. You know, two years ago, um, right in the middle of June, a big box came to my house, and in there was a little baby Barbara Rose. So I have. Oh, really? <laughs> Holly Hayden sent me a start. She said, I don't know if this is going to make it. So I kept it in a pot for two years, and I brought it in in the winter. I just was looking at it today. This year it's going in the garden. So yet last year we had several blooms. It was beautiful. So, um, I mean, it's just one of my, my favorite things. Well, we don't know how it will do in your climates. We don't have much black spot pressure here in California. So um, don't know how it will perform. But for us, it's just a perfectly healthy rose. You know, I'm willing to go the extra mile for this rose because it means <laughs> so much to me. You know, sometimes you just have to go for it. I'm willing Some to. roses are worth that, yes. <laughs> Well, just for the story and the kindness that she's shown, because uh, I had mentioned it on Instagram, actually, that, oh, I'd love that rose. And then, you know, to surprise me with a rose was such a kind thing to do. But rose people are like that. They do that sort of thing. Yes. And we just love to pass around the unusual roses and make sure that these treasures are preserved. That's what our cemetery garden is all about is preserving those roses well i'm so glad that barbara did um, climb through or over or under the barbed wire because i understand <laughs> that that field changed in a couple of years and that rose would not was not there is that true that's correct that's oh. true and that's true so many places that we've collected roses there are times that people come back to us and say do you have a rose that we know you collected from our spot that we have now lost, and then we work with them to uh, reestablish the rose where it once grew. So neat. You know, I know you have a team of volunteers there that help you, and I suspect that it is truly a labor of love. I bet it's a very strong team. It is, and there's just days that we're out there where there's just a sense of joy for being there. Um, this 
this week is one of those because we've had some rain and now it's warmed up and the roses are just exploding around us and it's just wonderful to be there. Well, I saw your schedule for the next few weeks and I've decided that I have to take the month of April off at some point and just come and stay because I think my life will not be complete if I don't attend a primping party. Well, yes, a primping <laughs> party is a fun thing to do. And when we, when I decided to, to hold that, there were people who said nobody will come just to weed. Indeed, people showed up with their weeding tools and their buckets, mewing pads, ready to go. So uh, we got a lot of weeds removed during our primping party. Oh, it's just a perfect name. I'm going to find a way to use that name. I'm going to have a primping party here, I think. I, I need to send you the poster for that because it's really cute uh, oh, this year. Sure. Yeah. It's a fabulous, fabulous idea. And there's, tell us about some of the events that are coming up. They're just wonderful. Well, I like to say that April begins in March for us. April's <laughs> our peak month. But, in fact, this Saturday is our Spring Beauties Awaken Tour. And this is when we feature the Banksia roses that go up the mm -hmm. trees. One goes up 50, 60 feet up a pine tree, a single white Banks rose. And then at the end of the garden, we have Banksia lutescens looking like fireworks hanging down from a cypress tree. And we have half a dozen kinds of Banks roses total in the garden, all of which will be blooming. But this is also a time for the teas to be blooming and things like uh, Ramona, the dark red uh, uh, offspring of the Cherokee rose, is growing and just glowing on our fence right now. So this Saturday is the first part of our rose season. Then we'll have our crimping party next the following Saturday on April 7th. And then it's open garden. And open garden started out just being one day. Well, this year we're going to actually extend it into a second day because we have more than 600 roses that the volunteers have propagated from our collection and from their collections. A lot of things you can't find anywhere else. And we don't know that we'll sell out all 600 in one day, and we know some people can't make it on Saturday, so we're also going to offer it on Sunday. And Connie Hilker from Virginia, from Heartwood Roses, will be visiting us, so she's agreed to speak on Sunday. And then we'll also be doing a memorial service on Sunday for the garden founder, co-founder, Jean Travis. So mm -hmm. Open Garden just ends up being jam-packed. Uh, we also lead tours during Open Garden and sell T-shirts and aprons and other rose items. Uh, we have a history tour of the cemetery. The day is just a wonderful day. Then we can't rest, and so the next weekend we'll be enjoying the evening in our Romance and Roses tour. And we started that with the idea that the climbing roses bloom a little later, and we just never really have time, we volunteers, to enjoy walking through them and just being surrounded by the roses in a quiet evening. Things tend to build, so it really isn't a quiet evening anymore. We'll have half a dozen costumed actors telling stories of legends of roses or historical figures who are buried in the cemetery. Kaiserine August Victoria will be there talking about her rose and about her statue at Sangerhausen Rose Garden. And so it's turned into a, a production and a fundraiser for us the evening of the 21st. Then we're going to also do a series of just rose walks and talks. We used to do a formal old garden rose class with lectures and handouts and, and rows of chairs. And last year we decided it was just more fun to walk through the garden and look at the roses and talk about them. So we'll be featuring different classes of the roses on three consecutive Sunday afternoons. And so then that extends into the first weekend in May. So I guess our April goes from the end of March to the beginning of May. You know, it's, one of your goals is to provide a place to educate the public about heritage roses. And you do this so very well and so very beautifully. Um, I'm sure people leave there and, you know, it's not something they're going to forget. I think that's true. And it, it's so nice to have a tangible garden dedicated to them for people to see and to learn about. 
I've been involved in internet groups talking heritage roses, and often people feel they're the the lone voice in their area. And you don't you build a community of rose lovers when there's a tangible place to visit and to see them and to learn about them. Well, for our friends who've never seen pictures of this garden, if this is new to you and you're hearing this, go to YouTube and search out Sacramento Historic Rose Garden. You, too, will fall in love with these roses. There's some beautiful videos there. Yeah, we have that half-hour documentary under Cemetery Rose, and that's where Barbara Oliva tells the story of collecting the pasture rose, and we hear from Fred Botin, one of the garden founders as well. We're very proud of that documentary, and it's up there for anybody to see. Oh, and it is fabulous. It is fabulous. Do you have a favorite rose in the garden? What rose that you cannot wait until it blooms? Oh, can't <laughs> wait till it blooms. Oh, you know, Teresa, it's it's too hard to pick out. It's <laughs> which ones are blooming at the moment. A rose I cannot do without in my home garden and the cemetery garden is Pearl Door. And that's not that rare, but it's that tea polyantha with the apricot, small pointed buds. That rose just blooms eight, nine months out of the year for us and is so rewarding. So that's a rose that I think is my staple of a rose. But now that I think about it, we have a single cream spinosissima that blooms and it has probably two and a half inch across flowers, big for a spinosissima, and it is so fragrant. And that probably is the rose that I wait for and really treasure because it is a once bloomer. It produces some wonderful mahogany red hips that persist, but the flowers are only there two, three weeks. So that may be the rose that I anticipate and enjoy the most. They're not there that long, but boy, they make an impact while they are. So it is so, so worth having them. Someday, I'm going to put it on my list. I'm going to be up there for that primping party. (laughs) Okay. Well, and we would love to have you at any time. And that's something, you know, when I find out that rose lovers have visited the cemetery and I haven't heard that they're there, I'm always disappointed because the payback for the labor of love that we do is sharing it with others. And I just love to show visitors around. Anita, it's been a pleasure to have you. You know, we so appreciate your faithfulness to this garden and the roses and your faithfulness to keeping the stories going. It's a very special thing. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And you made a point that I want to remake uh, is that it's not just me and it's not me. There's a team of volunteers there. And uh, absolutely, it's uh, all of us that make the garden what it is. Will you tell them how much we appreciate them, too? I will. To learn more about the events at the Sacramento Historic Rose Garden, visit their website, cemeteryrose.org. Well, friends, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Rose Chat Podcast, and we thank you for listening. Until next time, happy gardening from your friends at Rose Chat. You've been listening to the Rose Chat Podcast with Chris Van Cleve and Teresa Byington, expert rose gardeners who want to help you achieve the rose garden of your dreams. Don't miss an episode. Listen anytime on our website at rosechatpodcast.com or listen on the go via the Rose Chat app on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Share this podcast with your social networks and join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by using the hashtag RoseChat. Join us next time for another edition of the Rose Chat Podcast. The Rose Chat Podcast is a production of the Rose Chat Media Group, Birmingham, Alabama.